This is Dr. Scott McLean and this is a video about preparing for prosthetics using the CC bone mill. During this case I've decided to use the Nobel Parallel Conical Connection Implant. This is a small thread which is going to be good for bone grafting cases. It also is a platform shifted implant with a conical connection which has been shown by meta-analysis to actually maintain bone. So if we look at this implant one of the things we have to deal with is having too much bone sometimes after surgery. And so this is important to have the CC bone mill, which is a conical connection bone mill, which can be used for the Noble Active, the Parallel CC, and also the Replace CC. So anything Nobel BioCare that is conical connection. The kit itself comes in four different platforms with different sizes of bone mills for each of the platforms. So you'll notice that, for instance, on the regular platform, we're going to be using the 5.2 bone mill, which will bone mill just a little bit wider than what we need because we, we need to have an emergence profile that's going to be about 5 millimeters. So therefore, using this regular platform 5.2 is going to allow us to seat the abutment down properly at the time of the prosthetics, and even at the time of doing the temporary, which we're going to do today. The patient in this case has decided to replace the lateral and also a premolar but we can see that the lateral is actually a ridge lap so we have to prepare this above the prosthetics about three to four millimeters so three and a half we can see here that we had to do some block grafting prior to treatment then we did a smart fusion a smart fusion is taking a model from a scan at the lab and putting it into the CT scan using Nobel clinician software then we can enable ourselves to see where the prosthetics are so we can make sure we're placing the implant deep enough and getting it so that we have proper emergence profile. During the placement of this lateral, we'll actually be subcrestal of the bone, so we won't be at bone level. If we were at bone level, then the prosthetics would not look proper. So we have to be slightly below. You can see here maybe one to two millimeters below the bone level and uh, so once the screws are taken out we'll use a template to guide the surgery and get the implant in deep enough so we're going to go at least up into here to about three and a half millimeters so we're measuring the, the uh, depth from the prosthetics which is the free gingival margin so we can see the blue temporary crown here the wax up so we'll go down there about 3.5 millimeters on this case and then by doing so, we can generate a surgical template. So the surgical template is going to give us depth and angulation of the placement of this implant. So we click a button and then the surgical template is going to be fabricated. And what this surgical template will have is a little ring. And the ring will guide you to this depth and angulation. And so this is kind of so important to have this in the exact position from a depth and from emergence profile and getting, getting this to the proper angulation. So now after three months of healing, it's kind of exciting when you take an x-ray like this and see the bone staying exactly the way that you left it. And so it's not resorbing and it's uh, kind of staying up nice and high. But now we have to deal with this because we're going to have to seed an abutment that's about five millimeters wide and on a, a taper with emergence profile. So we raise a flap and have a look and we can see that the cover screw is inside here. We go to take the cover screw off, we can see how deep the bone actually is. It's difficult to see, but believe me, it's a couple millimeters of uh, depth here. So we're going to have to kind of deal with this with the CC bone mill. The CC bone mill comes with uh, two components. What you can see here is one is looking like a healing abutment that screws down on top of the implant. We have it attached to the replica, so I'll show you. But this kind of screws down into the implant itself. And then the bone mill itself has a flare on top. And I, I uh, sent diagrams in to actually have this kind of design like this. And so it's kind of exciting to see this. So you can see the bevel, it kind of bevels back so we get the emergence profile to clean the bone around the top of the CC implant. And it protects the platform shift so it doesn't touch it at all. And so it's uh, quite a fantastic tool to have in your kit. In fact, I think you have to have it. You need to have this with your kit if you are doing the CC type of implant systems because all three of the systems maintain bone so very well. It's important to kind of check and make sure that once you place this abutment on 
that the bone mill is not going to hit the teeth when you put it down and inside because you wouldn't want to groove out the side of these two teeth so it's important to check that before you start to cut um, this is a 5.2 so we shouldn't have any issue here because we're re replacing a, a lateral so you can see the bevel of the uh, bone mill which actually cuts uh, to an emergence profile that's going to match the abutment so it's going to be 0.2 wider than the abutment that we put down there so as we put it in we're looking and making sure it's not going to hit adjacent teeth then we start it and it's just going to cut a little bit of the bone around the top of the implant in a very precise way so we want to minimize inflammation here so you can see once this is seated down on top of this abutment the bone mill is going to stop it's going to make the perfect amount of bone reduction at the time of surgery or at second stage like I'm doing here so there's nothing wrong with doing it at second stage because we now can make our temporary and start to develop the soft tissues here and uh, this actually gives a little bit of blood supply so it's a uh, it's a good way to do it and uh, it actually is uh, protecting the bone during healing because this site is a uh, bone graft site so it allows that to get a little bit extra time so we'll take the bone mill abutment off and we start to try our abutment on and the abutment now will fit down there's no way this would have fit before so this is a titanium cylinder that I used to make temporaries and this would not have fit down and you would have a problem and trying to cut this with uh, other drills possibly nick the implant so we have to have the proper tooling to do this and instrumentation is so important but you'll see that now this is going to be in a position going to the incisal edge so I'm going to make an ASC crown here an angulated screw channel because I'm going to put it in the proper spot look at the bone around this implant even doing this bone mill CC we've got the bone at the exact top of the implant it's just simply fantastic So now we'll make a chair side temporary. It doesn't take that long using some flowable uh, resin and we'll create the ideal emergence profile for healing. So we're going to control that at the time of uh, second stage surgery. So we take off the abutment and start to shape it, put some resin on it, cut it back, create the emergence profile. And so there's techniques that I teach to do so once we have that done then we'll come back with the temporary and we'll place it and get it in position to have the soft tissue start to develop so as we screw this temporary crown down we're now going to let this heal for probably about four weeks to six weeks it's going to heal pretty quick but still let that kind of soft tissue fill in from behind create some emergence profile and we'll cut the uh, edge of the temporary back so we're just making this a non-functional load even though the implant is completely uh, in position and integrated we want to have this so that it's going to take some time to still progressively load this and let a little bit more pressure come on the crown from the bolus of food to create uh, s some better stronger bone before we put the final crown on now we can see that the access channel is coming towards the incisal edge and I'm often asked what do you do if it's coming into the facial or to this uh, even this position so what you're going to do is to make sure the tissues are going to be in the right position we'll kind of suture those down not going over the papilla but we're going to start to take some Teflon tape and I actually sorry I'm going to put a little bit of uh, bond on here just to give it a little bit of a, a, a shine so that uh, we're not doing a lot of polishing on this particular case and that's intentional so that we can get the adhesion of the tissues around that area so once we get to this level we're going to take some sterile Teflon tape so we actually sterilize it put it inside the channel then I'm going to take a little bit of a different color of flowable and actually just put it on the the access so normally I would use some ferment here but here I'm going to just put a little bit of flowable and not go way down in the channel and then just kind of close it off so this way the doctor that's going to restore it can come back and see exactly where the channel is people usually do not complain at all about this being an, an issue so it's an easy way to kind of fix it up and so even if it's on the facial you'll be able to do so our final task will be to make sure that this is a non-functional load so we'll take protrusive lateral working non-working all interferences off of this temporary crown so you can see there's a little gap underneath this now so we want to make sure it's completely clear so that even if they bite really hard and push the teeth out a little bit that this tooth is not going to hit 
and we'll have the, the final tooth in better occlusion but here we just want the bolus of food to be kind of hitting this when the soft tissues are healing so check this out it looks fantastic we can see the temporaries in place where we have it sutured down we'll let this heal and come back in a little bit so we can kind of make a, a final crown that's going to be fantastic